Hello, welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Becca and today I have a mid-month wrap-up. So far July has been a really good reading month for me. I've read six books so far and on the date that I'm filming this it is the 14th so that is a little under one book every two days which is amazing. I've already read more than I read in the entirety of June so far and so I thought I would bring you a mid-month wrap-up. Now these aren't going to happen every month because I don't always read so much but at the minute I'm really enjoying reading and the weather is really nice so I've been reading a lot outside and so we have a lot to talk about. I'm also trying a little bit of a new setup. I just got a brand new tripod which means that sometime in the future although I'm not quite sure exactly when I'd like to do it when the weather gets a little bit cooler. I will be doing a bookshelf tour because now I have a proper tripod that actually is stable so when I film my wrap-ups I normally sit on the floor because I have my bullet journal as well as a stack of books and it's too hard when I'm standing up to manage all of these things so instead of sitting on the floor I have a nice comfy poof we have a nice new angle going on so we're going to see how this setup works out for the videos where I have to sit down I'm not going to be doing any stats this time I will bring those to you at the end of the month when I do my end of month wrap-up and after all that setup let's just get straight into what I've read so far in July so the first one that I finished was Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas this is the third book in the Throne of Glass series and I don't really want to go into too many spoilers so I won't really tell you too much of what it's about. However, as usual, <laughs> what I remembered about this book actually happens in Queen of Shadows. So this is the book from the series that I forgot the most about. And my perspective on this has changed from the first time that I read it. I have done a full book diary so if you have read this book and want in-depth thoughts I will link that up here. Look at me pointing in the right direction. But essentially the first time that I read this book I only cared about the main characters that we'd been established with in the first couple of books. So Selena, Dorian and Kaol were all I really cared about so I only cared about their perspectives. However after reading the rest of the series Manon is one of my favourite characters so now I care more about her. And so throughout this book, because I know where it ends, I really didn't care about the main characters and really only wanted to know what was going on with Manon. So my perspective on reading this had completely changed and I also noticed that this book is set up to be a bridge in between the events of the first half of the series and the events that happen in the second half. So it is essentially a lot of training, a lot of character building and character development to set up the series for where it is going to go. So essentially it's a filler book. It's the filler book in the Throne of Glass series. That being said, I still really did enjoy it. I gave it five stars. You all know I love Sarah J Maas and I could read, well, I was gonna say I could read her writing all day long no matter what it was about, but as long as it's done well, because I didn't think A Court of Frost and Starlight was written very well, whereas this is written very well. And so I don't mind that it's a filler book. I still really enjoyed it and as usual, I gave it five stars. The second and fourth books that I read this month are from the same series, so I'll talk about them together. And they are Slammed and Point of Retreat by Colleen Hoover. So the first book, Slammed, is about a girl who moves to a new neighbourhood. Her father has died and they've had to move house. And she kind of, she goes on a date and gets into this guy who lives across the road, but she doesn't know that he's her teacher. Now that is a reveal in the book but I feel like it's something that you should know going into it that this is a forbidden romance, it's a teacher-student relationship and of course I don't condone that behaviour but I'm willing to re-evaluate my morals when reading a book. Um, I'm really addicted to Colleen Hoover's writing. I think that whatever it is that she does in her books keeps you hooked on wanting to read on. They're so easy to read, you have like amazing, well, amazing plot reveals. What I will say is that I've noticed that they follow the same format. I've read three of her books so far and what seems to happen is you read about 50 pages, you have a plot reveal and then you get about 60 to 70% in the book and then there's another plot twist and all three of her books that I've read have followed that same format. So it is a little bit predictable. I know when I get so far through the book that something else is going to happen just when you think everything's going to be okay. And I do want to talk about a trigger warning in these books that people don't talk about and it's particularly relevant to me right now. And because it can be relevant to me who is not, I'm not a triggered person. I don't get triggered by a lot of things. I don't get emotional when I'm reading books. I'm not like that as a person and it's okay if you are I'm just not but if this can trigger me it can trigger other people. I'm not going to go into specifics because I don't want to spoil anyone but Colleen Hoover's books of the three that I've read so far two of them have contained terminally ill people and the other one that didn't have 
a terminally ill person was set in a hospital in the ICU unit. Now that is particularly relevant to me right now in my life. It might not be relevant to you guys. You might not consider that a trigger warning, but it was triggering for me. And this is something, these always come in the later plot twists in the book. So you don't know going into it, you're already like consumed with the story by the time that you get this. And a lot of it was personally very relevant to me and relevant to my life right now. And it upset me a little bit. It was difficult to read. So I just thought that people should know that going in because it's not something that's talked about. It's not a trigger warning as such, but it is triggering to people who are going through certain things in their life. So if you have ever known a terminally ill person who has not survived, if you've ever spent a great deal of time in hospitals, if you ever had anyone you know in an intensive care unit, maybe don't go into Holly Colleen Hoover's books unless you are in a safe place. I'm okay. It didn't like destroy me, but it did upset me. And so I felt like it was something I could mention. And now for the second part of this book is Point of Retreat. And this is essentially the follow on. It's the sequel, it's a direct sequel from the first book. It is told from Will's perspective instead of the main character of the first book, Laken. They are like the romantic people. And I can't really tell you much about that because spoilers, but it is just like a continuation of their journey. I would also like to say that slam poetry plays a big part in this. And I really enjoyed that because there is slam poetry in it. I assume it's written by Colleen Hoover. Obviously it's not the best because Colleen Hoover is not a slam poet, but it was good. It was interesting. I liked that aspect. And yeah, I gave both of these books three stars because they are not her best written books and they are very cheesy. The insta love in the first book is a little bit unbearable and that hindered my enjoyment of these books because I didn't feel like there was much chemistry or connection with the characters because it was so insta lovey. So after that big long ramble, the third book that I read in July was Linger by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the second book in the Wolves of Mercy Falls series and it is one of the books that I'm working through for my goal to read the oldest books on my Goodreads TBR. These books are good. I've been listening to the audiobook for most of them. I tend to have like a physical book and then I'll listen to the audiobook of these and when I wrap up my physical book, I'll continue with these physically. I really enjoy Maggie Stiefvater's writing style. However, I find these books to be forgettable. This is another three star book this month. It has been the month of three star books. And I just don't feel like there's a lot of plot. It seems to be very character driven, which is okay because I am enjoying it. I am enjoying the journey. However, I don't feel like this story is going to stick with me. There's nothing overly special about it aside from the writing, but the audiobooks are very enjoyable. They are a multicast audiobook. And so I would recommend the, those if you want to try this out. It, it's good to listen to, it's fun to read, but it's nothing special. For those of you that don't know, this is a story about werewolves. That's pretty much it. Great writing, forgettable plot. Enjoying reading them, but they won't stick with me. The next book I read was an audiobook, and that is It's Okay, I'm Wearing Really Big Knickers by Louise Renison. This is the second book in the Confessions of Georgia Nicholson. This has also been a month for like books in a series, so I can't really give you a great synopsis. But this is essentially just the diary of a 14 year old girl who's growing up learning about puberty and boys and being interested in boys and makeup and things like that. And it's just really fun and it's hilarious. I have said before that the language is not necessarily appropriate for now. These books wouldn't be written the same if they were written now. However, this was published in the year 2000. And so I expect it to be a little bit outdated in its like values and things like that. I listened to the audiobook of this on Scribd, which is an online subscription service. It's kind of like Audible, but it gives you unlimited listening for, in the UK, it's like £6.50 a month, but I think it's like $9.99. So it gives you unlimited listening to audiobooks. There's also eBooks on there. They have a great selection and it's a really good service. And I've listened to, like I read both Colleen Hoover books on Scribd and I listened to the Second Wolves of Mercy Fall book and this in audiobook. So I would highly recommend that service because it's unlimited and it's really cheap. But I listened to the audiobook of this and it is narrated by the author herself, which is both a plus and negative. It's a plus because she really knows the tone and the language of the book and how to make it really funny. Like I really enjoyed listening to the audiobook of this series. However, it's negative because she's like 50 and the <laughs> narrator is like a 14 year old. However, if you don't really think about that, it's a really good audiobook. It's really funny. This is one of my favourite childhood books and listening to the audiobook really like brought it to me with a full new experience. So I would like to carry on listening to the rest of the series in audiobook. However, I don't think the rest of the books are available till later this month. I gave this five stars mainly for nostalgia. If I'd read it for the first time, no, I probably wouldn't have, but 
this series is great the first book i give four stars because you can tell it's the first book it's not like amazing but this one five stars mainly for nostalgia another thing i've noticed about this series reading it as a 25 year old robbie is such a fuck boy like it's unbelievable like he's really irritating me but dave as always is like the sweetest the sweetest thing ever so yeah, five stars because mainly nostalgia, but I absolutely love this series. So the last book that I've completed so far is a bit of a weird one and I will explain why. It is Traitor to the Throne by Alwyn Hamilton, which is the second book in the Rebel of the Sand series. I gave this 4.5 stars and if you've been watching my channel for a while, you will know that I don't give half stars. But I had to with this one because I really enjoyed it. I've put this on the list of my best books of the year, but the first 150 pages were so rushed. Like you would have a scenario that feels like the big thing that happens at the end of a book and then it would be resolved in two chapters and then you'd have another big thing and it would be resolved in two chapters and it was really hard to follow i was really confused and then you get to like page 150 and it just stops you're in an established setting and the story just continues from there and it is phenomenal so i wanted to give this five stars but the first like hundred and so pages of the book just completely threw me that i had to dock it at least half a star but essentially as this is the second book i can't really tell you too much but this follows amani who is a desert girl and she gets into an altercation with this foreigner and they go on a wild adventure what i can say is that the setting of this book has changed from the desert to the city and the culture and the setting and the atmosphere of the series is what really makes it. It really transports you to that desert world. It's also a perfect book to be reading in the summer because of the desert setting. And something else I really liked is the mythology in this. There are four chapters in this book, about four characters in the book, but they are written in like a fairy tale style and they were my favourite parts of the whole book. But the mythology and the culture and setting of this world are absolutely phenomenal and i would really highly recommend this series i don't think i've read a desert fantasy before could be wrong but i don't think i have i know that city of brass is like a desert fantasy and maybe ember of, an ember in the ashes although i'm not too sure about the setting of that one but yeah this is a desert fantasy that sort of revolves around gin and genies and things like that and it is really really good so if you haven't picked this up yet i would recommend it I know that it is reasonably well known but not very well hyped it does kind of the first book is like just another YA series but when you get through the first 150 pages of this 600 page book it really picks up it really gets interesting and I just couldn't be torn away I was almost tempted to just carry on to the third book in the series which never happens with me I like to take a break in between books in a series because I kind of get bored if I'm in the same world too long but I just wanted to go on to the third book but I didn't go on to the third book and that is because I put a poll on Twitter last night and asked what I should read next and nobody voted for it and I was really upset but the vote came down to a tie and it came down to Queen of Shadows or the book that I actually started which was Ready Player One by Ernest Cline so this is the book that I'm currently reading I am 20, 37 pages into it I'm enjoying it so far. I'm still getting to grips with the system. He hasn't really entered the Oasis yet. But for those of you who don't know, this is a virtual reality sci-fi and it is about this virtual online world that pretty much everybody lives in. Like they go to school there, they go to church there because the world has essentially gone to shit. And the creator of this world has died and said that he will leave all of his billions and the control of the oasis which is the virtual world to whoever can find the easter egg he's put in the oasis and this follows wade watts who is searching for those easter eggs and he's really from like a down and out impoverished community and he doesn't have the money of the grades to go to college so when he graduates high school if he can't find the easter egg to the oasis then he literally has nothing so only 37 pages in but i am enjoying it so far and i will let you know what i think at the end of the month so that was everything for my mid-month wrap up i hope you have enjoyed it please let me know what you think about any of the books that i've read so far this month please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to if you head into my description box you'll find a link to my goodreads instagram and twitter and also my curious cat if you'd like to follow me on any of those and also a link to my bookish body butter and candle website, the Instagram for that, and a 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today. Bye.